What up, Bench Buddy family? We're back with another college football video, our weekly college football preview. We're already on week six. Um, we're going to just jump straight into it. Last week, Ty, um, you know, after Friday night, I was looking pretty confident there after Iowa blew out Maryland. But once Saturday hit, you pretty much took over. Yeah, it was a weird week, really. I'm surprised I did that well. Uh, actually, it was looking good until the late night games, LSU and UCLA losing, but uh, really impressed by Cincinnati last week. That was probably the biggest win of the week with them winning at Notre Dame. And this is the best chance for a group of five team to make the playoff that we've ever seen. So it'll be interesting as the season goes on. We'll go to our first game um, on Friday night, which will be tonight when our video is dropping. You got Stanford who came off a big upset last week. Um, against Oregon and Arizona State, you know, who's caught fire as of late. Um, they're pretty heavily favored in this one, which I think, you know, it's kind of a little too much after Stanford just pulled off that upset against the top five team. Um, they, they're on the road. You know, it's always tough to get back to back victories over AP ranked team. But I'm going with Arizona State here just because they've been hot. And I think Stanford's going to cool off after that big win. Yeah, Stanford did have a big win over Oregon, but the officials may or may not have played a part in that outcome. I don't want to get fined. Um, but I think Arizona State should coast to a win here. Jaden Daniels is starting to play really well for them at quarterback. So I think Stanford is coming off that big win, and they're going to fall right back down to earth here. Our next game, we got the Red River rivalry. Oh, I, I didn't mess it up. That's good. Uh, you got that first Saturday game at 12 ABC you got game day there, which kind of robbed the Penn state Iowa game, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, kind of surprising here that Oklahoma is favored by three and a half, but then again, they have, you don't know which Oklahoma team you're going to get. So I think that's a fair line. Um, but I'm, I'm going with Oklahoma just cause you know, they've been pretty dominant over the last five years in this series. And I just think history is going to repeat itself and Oklahoma will win this game. Yeah, ever since that loss to Arkansas, I've been liking what I've seen from Texas. And this rivalry, usually you can just kind of throw out the records. I know people say that about all rivalries, but it's not really true. But with this one, Texas has been really bad some years and upset some good Oklahoma teams. So I like Texas the way they're playing, and Oklahoma just has been squeaking by, and I think this might be their wake-up call and a loss. So. I, I think they definitely need a wake-up call, and I think this will be the one. Another game um, that's flying a little bit under the radar, you know, OSU and 21 for the spread. I think that's a little high for this Maryland team. I know that they got blown out last week against Iowa. Yeah, but, you know, obviously that's just a bad week. Like, look into NFL, you know, the Packers week one, they got blown out by 35, and now they're three and one and dominating in the NFL. So it's only one week. Um, I mean, this Maryland team has surprised people already at four and one. Um, but I mean, I, I just think it's too hard to go against Ohio State in the horseshoe to an unranked opponent who's, you know, in the Big Ten that hasn't really proven themselves over the last few years. Uh, so I'm going to stick with Ohio State here. Uh, yeah, I think Ohio State might have turned a corner last week because they just blew the doors off Rutgers, who I thought was actually a pretty solid team this year. And obviously, Maryland looked pretty rough against Iowa with. Talia Tagovailoa throwing, I think, four picks. So maybe he can bounce back this week against a subpar secondary for Ohio State, but I don't see Maryland stopping that offense at all. So Ohio State should run through him. Another 12 o'clock game. You got an interesting game here. You got MSU, who's been red hot this year, coming out of nowhere against this three and two Rutgers team, you know, has lost to Ohio State and Michigan, two top 10 teams. And um, you know, going into Rutgers in New Jersey, you know, it's not it's not an easy task because, you know, Rutgers two losses have came um, obviously to the top 10 Big Ten teams. And, you know, this Michigan State team kind of tripped up against Nebraska a few weeks ago. And I think this could be another trap game for them as well, because, you know, Rutgers has great defense. Um, obviously not last week that that was not good, but I think they're going to get back on track. But it's just hard to bet against the team that's red hot and continuing to just play excellent. Um, so I'm going with Michigan State here. 
if this game was played last week, right after Rutgers played Michigan, I might've went with Rutgers, but they got shredded last week by Ohio state and Michigan state has Kenneth Walker, obviously, who is one of the best running backs in the country. So he should have a big game against Rutgers. And I think that'll be the difference. So Michigan state should get to six and zero. it might be close, but I think they'll keep winning. Another 12 o'clock game. You got a battle of the Alabama hopefuls. Um, you know, these teams were in the SEC last week, undefeated, uh, you know, going against Georgia, going against Alabama. They're, oh, they got a shot. You know, these teams kind of came out of nowhere, and then they absolutely got throttled uh, by both those teams and proved that they weren't at the top yet in the SEC. Um, so this is an interesting game to look at to see how these teams are going to bounce back. But I think just because Ole Miss has the Heisman, one of the Heisman favorites and a great quarterback, um, you know, I'm going with Ole Miss here, especially, and it's at home. So I think it's just hard to bet against a team like that. Yeah, I think people may have forgotten that Arkansas went 2-10 two and ten two years ago. So they got off to a hot start, obviously, but they are still coming off a awful year. So they don't quite have the talent just yet. They will in a few years, but they're not there yet. So I think Ole Miss should bounce back, and I think they'll cover that five and a half, and their offense will get back on track. Uh, an interesting game here at three. You got two three and two teams um, in the ACC. You know, the ACC is kind of wide open right now. Um, so that's why I threw this game in here, as it's a big game for both these teams to see, you know, if they have a chance at the ACC championship later on in the year. Um, Virginia is three and two, who's not like a – I would say they're above expectations because no one thinks of Virginia as a football school. It's always basketball first. Um, but if they get a win here, you know, people are going to start to take notice of that. But I'm going with Louisville here. It's in Louisville. And I think, once again, it's just hard to bet against the home team. Yeah, like all ACC games, this was a tough one for me. I think if you had to sit down and rank every team in the ACC, you'd be sitting there for hours upon hours because basically in all the ACC games this year, you can just flip a coin and kind of the same deal with this one. I'm going to Louisville at home and they have a big win over UCF this year and we're competitive with Wake Forest last week. So I'm going to go with Louisville, but again, this could go either way. And then another game, at 3.30, a big game uh, for both these schools. You know, Georgia will continue to just dismantle uh, these ranked opponents as it's not going to matter. Um, 15 and a half on the road in Auburn. You know, that's just insane for the, the road team to have that much of a big of a spread and to go in to an, as an away opponent to go in there. That's just unheard of nowadays. Um, so that just tells you how strong this Georgia team is. And Bo Nix, whatever happened to that guy, you know, he was supposed to be the greatest thing since Cam Newton, um, and he's still making the same mistakes he has his freshman year. So I think it's just hard to bet against JT Daniels in Georgia, so I'm going with Georgia. Yeah, I, uh, I liked Arkansas to cover that huge spread last week against Georgia, and obviously it wasn't even close. So I, if I was betting on this game, I wouldn't even touch the line. Probably wouldn't bet on it at all because I think Georgia is going to continue to dominate. but. 15 and a half on the road is tough to tough to bet on. So I think I'd probably stay away from it, but Georgia should continue to dominate here. And I think they might be the best team in the country. So we'll see. Another 330 game and another ACC game that we were talking about. Wake Forest came out of nowhere. No one's really expecting this team to do much. Um, as we were saying, the ACC conference is wide open. And right now it's theirs to lose as they're the highest ACC team in the rankings, undefeated still. And um, I'm going to just say they keep it rolling here and head to 6-0 and beat Syracuse in the Dome. Yeah, I'm just going off what you said. It's Wake Forest, their conference to lose. And this is the ACC in 2021, so they will lose it because of that. That's just how the ACC works this year for some reason. So Wake Forest is the new number one team, so that means they're going to lose. So I have Syracuse winning, and I don't think Wake Forest is going to be able to win on the road. Everyone's telling them how good they are, and I don't really think they're that great. So I think Syracuse pulls the upset. All right, Ty, this is all you. Yeah, Ball State 
uh, beat Western Michigan last year in the last game they were playing for the MAC West to go to the MAC championship. So I think Western gets their revenge this week. There are a few games I'm worried about, but this isn't one of them. They should, uh, they should easily get by Ball State. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, for the first MAC game last week, going on the road to Buffalo, beat them pretty, pretty good. Uh, the score doesn't dictate how much they kind of throttled them. Um, a late touchdown there kind of saved them from looking bad, but. This Western team, you know, only lost to Michigan, and that was the first game of the year. And, you know, since then, they've just looked like a completely different team. Um, so right now, if I was a betting man, this team looks like one of the favorites to win the MAC. And this takes us to our next game, biggest game of, you know, I think this is the biggest game of the year so far. Um, not just because rankings-wise, three and four, but just because how much – it'll play out in the Big Ten as well. Um, so for all you Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State fans, you need Iowa here to win this game because um, Penn State, you know, is on that side of the conference. And that's just that's just another stepping stone that you would have to, you know, get through if happens you say you lose a game or so. Um, but if you're a Penn State fan here, obviously you win this game. Um, that puts you up pretty much Obviously, you jump three, maybe even two. Who knows? Especially because it's a road game. But, you know, I just liked how Iowa's defense has played this year. Um, they've done just enough. Mediocre, you could say, on offense. But I think this is a home game where they need to show out. And I think the offense will show out. So I'm going with Iowa. Yeah, as a Michigan fan, I'm really pulling for Iowa here because if Penn State wins this game, I think they win the Big Ten East because Michigan has to play at Penn State. So to be honest, right now, I don't see us winning that game. So I think we need Penn State to lose this game in, in Columbus. So I hope Iowa does it, but I think Penn State's going to win it. I think Iowa's defense has really been kind of relying on turnovers this year. And Sean Clifford does not turn the ball over at quarterback. So we'll see if Iowa can compete without getting those turnovers. And then I just haven't really seen Iowa win a big game like this in a while. I mean, obviously, they've pulled some big upsets, but I haven't seen them win a game where both teams are ranked in the top five or the top ten in a while. So uh, I got to see them do it before I can pull the trigger on them. So I'm going Penn State, but really pulling for Iowa. An interesting game here in the Big 12. You got Texas Tech, who's 4-1, and one, uh, TCU, who's 2-2. Two and two. But, you know, TCU is – somehow favored on the road obviously they must not look highly of this texas tech team but obviously you and i here are going with texas tech i don't really know too much about these teams but i just know that texas tech has put together a solid year so far and i think they're just going to keep it rolling yeah i don't think either of these teams are very good to be honest uh tcu has a win over cal which i guess is a decent win but other than that they've look pretty bad this year and Texas Tech on the other hand gave up 70 to Texas a few weeks ago so I don't know this is just whoever plays less bad will win the game and I'm going Texas Tech and I don't know Gary Patterson for TCU might be trending towards the hot seat here skip one no so a battle of surprising teams Again, um, this Wyoming team, since Josh Allen has been irrelevant. And Air Force, you, there's always a military base every year that comes out of nowhere. and It's pretty good every year, and Air Force is looking like that team. Um, and I'm going to pick them here just solely on the fact that, you know, they, they're just going to keep it rolling. Uh, this Wyoming team, I don't know too much about, but they're only 4-0 this year, and I think they're going to take their first loss to Air Force. Yeah, uh, Wyoming last week barely, or maybe two weeks ago, barely beat UConn, who is 0-5 or 0-6. So that is a little shaky. And Air Force, I think you'll be lucky to see them throw the ball two times in this game. I think they're just going to run it down Wyoming's throat, and I think they'll win the game. All right, now for the big one. Um, you know, last week, Michigan – we were all like, you know, we'll be happy if we escape with the win here, you know, maybe by a touchdown or less. But, you know, they completely proved us wrong, blew out Wisconsin. And now they got to go on the road again in prime time 
to a Nebraska team that has been trending upward. Um, but then again, they can take two steps forward and one step back. So, you know, you never really know what Nebraska team you're going to get here. Um, but I, I'm just going with Michigan just because, you know, they've proved it week in and week out. But if they get behind, I'm interested to see what they will do because, they you know, they haven't played from behind once this year. Um, so if they can get off to a lead early, I think Michigan will just keep that lead and win this game. Yeah, this is a scary game here. Night game on the road. And ever since losing to Illinois, Nebraska has looked like a much improved team. And Adrian Martinez, his main thing was that he always turned the ball over. He has the talent. Now he's stopped turning the ball over. So it could be interesting here with Michigan on the road. Can they stop an explosive quarterback? They haven't really faced one this year, but. I think they'll force a turnover or two on defense finally, and I think they should win a close game here. This week you get a bounce back Notre Dame team um, who, you know, didn't look too hot against Cincinnati, lost at their own place. Um, so they dropped a lot in the rankings here, but I think they're going to go on the road, um, beat Virginia Tech, which will be kind of a statement win, um, you know, because it's a road game and you just got – be in your own stadium so I think this will be kind of like a I don't know what, what would you say like a moment momentum builder I would say um for this Notre Dame team can Could rally be. the locker room together for you know the tough part of the schedule as you're heading to the back end of the season um so I, that's why I'm picking Notre Dame here yeah obviously Virginia Tech's kind of a hot and cold team because they play in the ACC so you know all those teams are like that but Virginia Tech has beaten a good North Carolina team at home already this year, and that's a tough place to play on the road at night. And Notre Dame really has no idea who their QB1 is going into this game. I'm, I'm going to assume they're going to start Drew Pine, who came in against Cincinnati and played okay, but they have three guys that are going in and out at quarterback, and I don't think that's good for the offense. So I think Virginia Tech's going to add to Notre Dame's ugly few weeks here. Uh, an interesting game here as you got Kentucky, who's 5-0, and versus LSU, who's kind of been a little bit of disappointment so far um, at 3-2. and um, This Kentucky team, you know, they've had talent over the last few years, but they just finally – they haven't really put it together. But now they finally have, man. They're 5-0. and um, You've got a tough task at 7.30 at night, LSU coming into your stadium. But I think just because it's a home game, I'm going with Kentucky here. Um, I really wanted to take LSU, but I just think that Kentucky's one of those SEC teams that, you know, comes out of nowhere and just has a good year. Um, so that's why I'm sticking with Kentucky here. Yeah, it's hard to figure out how good Kentucky is because they did not look that great. I mean, they started 4-0, but they were barely squeaking by some really bad teams. And then all of a sudden they beat a top 10 team in Florida. So I don't really know which team you're going to get, but I think it's going to be more of a letdown situation for Kentucky. That 5-0 and record looks pretty good, but are they really a 5-0 and worthy team? I don't know. So I think LSU is going to take advantage of a letdown for Kentucky and beat them on the road. Um, there's not really much to be said about this game. As Texas A&M was a highly the second best team in the SEC heading into the year, and now they're not even ranked. Um, this game had a lot of hype around it at the beginning of the year, but now no one's talking about it. Um, so if that tells the story on this game, you know, you got to hammer Alabama here. Um, they've proved it every single week that they're the one, if not the best, college football team in America. And I'm going with Alabama strictly on that. Yep, I'm taking Alabama to cover here. Texas A&M had a very head-scratching loss to Mississippi State last week. I didn't watch the game, but I don't know how they lose that game at home. And now they're supposed to be Alabama at home. I mean, that's just obviously not going to happen. They've been disappointing all year, and I think Alabama is going to hang at least 40 on them and beat them by 25 or 30 points. And that'll be it for today's video. Um, if you liked it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff. And till then, the Bench Buddies are out. She never called back.